In this video, we're gonna show you how to replace the driver's side catalytic converter on your Dodge Ram, located on the driver's side lower portion of the engine. Using our 7.8 socket, we're gonna head loosen and remove our lug nuts. Now that we have the lug nuts removed, let's go ahead and loose and remove the wheel and set that aside. Now at the driver's side front wheel removed, we're gonna go ahead and access these two bolts here on the tail end of the exhaust manifold, holding the pipe flange together here. I'm gonna go ahead and try and reach up and inside and use a 15 millimeter wrench on the back side and a 15 millimeter socket on the front. Normally these back nuts here are secured using metal tabs holding the nut in place and then just remove the bolt but our tabs are rusted off so we need to hold the back nut as we remove the bolt on the front Good, remove that nut and bolt, and then we'll go ahead and do the same for the upper. Now on our upper bolt here, we had that little metal locking tab that was supposed to hold the nut in place. It was so rusted it broke, but it's still hanging on, preventing us from getting a wrench on the nut. So we need to pop the rest of it off. We're just using a pry bar here to go ahead and tap the tin piece of metal off. Go ahead and remove that bolt. Remove that nut. And we'll set that aside. This is the retaining tab that was rusted and was not holding the nut anymore. So this was spinning. We had to get this opened up so we could get our wrench onto the nut and hold that in place. Now on the bottom here, you want to go ahead, loosen and remove this clamp. Ours is a 15 millimeter, so we're gonna go ahead and loosen these here, pull that clamp off. If your clamp is rusted or anything like that, you wanna go ahead and remove that accordingly and replace the clamp if necessary. Now gaining access to the upper O2 sensor here that we have to remove, I'm gonna use a 22 millimeter wrench. Now going between the drive shaft and the transmission, there's really no room to really loosen that and you can't go this side here or on the other side. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead, loosen and remove the four bolts holding our front drive shaft to the differential flange here and just swing that off to the side so we can go ahead and access that O2 sensor. Before we unbolt our drive shaft from the diff flange here, I'm gonna go ahead and take a crayon and I'm going to mark one ear because we want this to line up in the same exact position as it was when we removed it. Using a 15 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and loosen and remove these bolts. Be careful with that drive shaft. Make sure it doesn't slip down and bonk you in the head. Go ahead and let that come down. That's gonna give us easy access to this here. We're gonna continue to unthread this here until it's completely out. And once you loosen the upper O2 sensor with your wrench, go ahead and pull that out. 
You can disconnect the connector on this as well, or you can go ahead and tuck this up into another harness just so that that doesn't fall down and hit anything else. Now what we're gonna do is prop our drive shaft back up into place temporarily. Throw one bolt in, catch a few threads. This is gonna allow us to go ahead and access the rear O2 sensor right behind our catalytic converter. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove this all the way just like we did on the front sensor. I'll go ahead and remove that rear O2 sensor. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and disconnect the connector on the other side, or we're going to go ahead and tuck this up top. We don't want this to slip down to hit anything. So we're just going to tuck it into a upper harness up here to hold it in place. Now in the middle of your transmission mount cross member right here, there are two 15 millimeter nuts going to that transmission mount. Let's go ahead, loosen and remove those. Now we're gonna go ahead and use our pole jack with a block of wood just to support the transfer case in the tail end of the transmission. That way there, when we unbolt this cross member here, the tail section of the transmission and transfer case will be supported. Use our 18 millimeter socket on the bolt side, 18 millimeter wrench on the other side, loosen and remove this bolt here, as well as one beside it. We're gonna repeat that for the driver's side. Now, if you're removing your bolts at home and your vehicle is not rusty, be careful because this bracket can fall down. Ours is pretty rusty. It's kind of stuck up in position. We just need to give that a few bonks to loosen it up. Now we're gonna go ahead and persuade this bracket with our pry bar to try and get that free. We want to go ahead and pull this pipe out of our passenger in center crossover pipe here. I'm just going to go ahead and manipulate the pipe around and twist that out like so. Go ahead and take that other pipe, swing that up and around. Now we have to get the front flange up to the manifold before we line up that middle pipe. Let's go ahead and get this pipe lined up here with our mid pipe. Once we get this inserted, we're gonna go ahead and put our two bolts up on the flange on the exhaust manifold. We 
Once we get one in, we'll go ahead and grab the other bolt and get that one started as well. Now before we tighten down that flange completely, you want to go ahead and make sure that the exhaust pipe and everything is lined up where it should be. So we're simply going to go ahead and push this up, get that positioned where it should be properly. I'm just going to use a block of wood. Just to secure that in place, the rest of our pipe is lined up where it needs to be. I'm going to go back up top and tighten down those two bolts on that flange. Now that we have both of those in, let's go ahead and snug these down evenly, going back and forth. To make sure that, that flange is evenly tightened down. Both bolts are tight. I'm going to put some anti-seize compound on the threads for this O2 sensor. I'm going to go ahead and thread this in. Now these here, once you feel them bottom out, you want to go ahead and try and get in another quarter turn or so. You want to make sure it's in there pretty tight. Let's go ahead and repeat for the upstream. So we're going to remove our stabilizing bolt here that was holding our drive shaft up in place. Let's go ahead and let that drop down. I'm going to go ahead and grab our O2 sensor that we had supported up top. I'm going to put a little bit of any seize compound on the threads. You don't want to get that on the sensor itself. I'm going to rotate this here counterclockwise. Get that threaded in. Let's go ahead and tighten that down. Now the reason for rotating this counterclockwise before we install it is that if you left the connector connected up top and then you install this and thread it in clockwise, you're gonna bind up the wires here. You don't want that to happen. So by rotating it counterclockwise before installing it and then you thread it in, it'll unwind it and leave these wires in a nice neutral relaxed position. Once that's anchored, you wanna go ahead and bring that drive shaft back up match up those marks that we had put in earlier. Now we went ahead and put some blue Loctite on our threads here for our dry shaft bolt. Let's go ahead and get all of these started. So we went ahead and put some blue thread locker on these bolts here before installing those. And once we get all four of them started, we can go ahead and tighten those down. With all four bolts installed, let's snug these down. going to torque these bolts down to 85 foot pounds. I'm just going to use my pry bar here just to lock that in place.
line up your cross member here. And once you get these holes lined up, go ahead and install your bolts. nuts installed on all four of these and then we'll go ahead and just tighten those down these are 18 millimeter socket and wrench and we'll just tighten those up. Install the transmission mount nuts. I'm going to get these both started by hand first. Once you have those started, just go ahead and zip those down and make sure they're tight. Again, torque down our cross member nuts here. We're gonna come around to the back side here with our 18 millimeter and torque these down to 75 foot pounds. With our cross member installed, we can now go ahead and remove our jack. And go ahead and set that aside. You want to go ahead and tighten this down evenly. Once you're all set with this here, you want to go ahead and hop in the vehicle, start it up, check for any exhaust leaks. If you do hear an exhaust leak, come back and double check all of your clamps, tighten everything down appropriately. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.